we 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 are going to have a good day and it is a good day because if you were to place your hand over your heart you could feel your heart beating and if you place your fingers under your nose you could feel yourself breathing and if i can just reach the internet and you put my hand on your head i could probably feel you thinking that alone friends mm, let's say a great big thank you for the ability for us to breathe and think and feel because i come in and i like to teach and i teach at minimum one live class a week and that is a luxury but i don't did anybody else hear me whistle right now like a luxury <laughs> it is a luxury but i don't want anybody to ever think that the only thing i love prioritize or care about is business what i love prioritize and care about is health and wellness and let's give a little bit of gratitude for that having said that let's have a conversation i show up i love to teach live classes i love to answer the live questions so let's framework this one a little tiny bit different let's focus on a particular topic now before anybody yawns let's talk about the history of marketing okay i'm gonna bring up our slide and this is where we're going to start a business owner's guide to modern marketing but like shout out, boys and girls, marketing has always existed. Marketing existed when people were standing on soapboxes. Marketing existed when people were, you know, in the invention of the printing press. Marketing exists with radio and television and marketing continues to exist and iterate over the years. Now, with the advent of the internet, with the World Wide Web, marketing has really changed. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the, the specifics of the change. What I am going to say is that marketing has become widely accessible and consequently, it's been overdone. There are so many people who are marketing that all of a sudden, instead of marketing being on a billboard or in a radio ad, we see and we get marketing in the palm of our hand all day long. So just to make sure that number one, I'm not talking to myself because I really do appreciate when people talk back to me because I only do this for people who end up watching. So holler back at your girl. Can you relate to this? I want you to just say yes in the comments if you feel flooded with marketing. Now here's the thing, I hate asking rhetorical questions. I really wanna get your um, perspective. If you don't feel like you're flooded with marketing, I wanna know more about how you're engaging. I wanna know how you're perceiving marketing. I like to look at these opportunities as conversations that we can learn from each other. But if you feel flooded, you say yes. And if you are like, no, I feel like marketing's been pretty balanced, leave a no. I wanna follow up and Christina in the comments is gonna let me know where things are laying. Now, until we start hearing back from you, um, I want to point out that not just has marketing changed over the years, not just modern marketing has changed over the years. The thing that we have to really dial into is that because marketing has changed so quickly, our senses are dialed in. Like, our BS meter is off the Richter scale. Like we can look at something and be like, that's fake, that's smarmy, this person's trying to trick me. Our, we're now heightened to seeing marketing when it's just like people faking the funk. So knowing that marketing has never been easier and knowing that our senses has been heightened, it could make it more difficult for your business and your marketing to get seen. So it is easier for your business to reach more people but it is harder for your business to get noticed. Ooh, like, I don't know if I should say it again. It's never been easier for you to reach more people, billions of billions of people in the palm of your hand, but it's never been harder to get noticed. But there is really good news. And the good news is that you have the power to change the game. The good news is that by simply flipping the way that you're looking at your marketing, specifically in modern day, the game can change. Now, in order for you to get noticed, I'm going to have to say something that rubs people the wrong way. You're going to have to do what other people are not willing to do to get what you want. In order to get noticed, there's a good chance that you have to do something that other people are not willing to do. And so when you think, okay, well, what are you actually asking me to do? Well, I think the answer is simple and I believe that you should be yourself. Sounds very easy. And yet a lot of people find it hard. They find it hard to be themselves, which is crazy because by and large, like as you walk through the grocery store or as you go to your church or synagogue or a yoga studio, as you're walking along the beach with your dog, you know who you are and you could simply say, hi, how are you? 
If somebody sat next to you on the subway and they said, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a videographer. And they asked you a couple questions, you could talk about it. And all of a sudden it goes to social media. Oh, I don't know what to say. Okay, well, the thing is, is if you were to look at it as a conversation, you would feel less intimidated to say, well, what do I need to say that's like perfect marketing? What if I told you you don't have to have perfect marketing? What if I told you that you could just be social? Remember, I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. It is called social media. It is not called selling media. What if your whole objective to move sales in your business is to simply be social? Now, I get it. Whenever I talk about these things, I have had the luxury and privilege to stand on stages all over the world. And whenever I say these things, like be yourself and be social and the sales will come. Oh, you see, Jasmine, that must work for you because, and then they list all these other things. They say, I can't afford to pitch because it's only when I pitch is when I get sales. I don't know what to talk about on social media. I don't know how to keep talking about the same thing in a different way. Like, listen, all of the things right here on the slide are going to be a reason or an excuse you could use. But I have the best part, is when you are social and you find a way to connect with people, like, I don't know, when you find a way, like right now, just to simply have a live conversation and answer questions, you can actually sell. Simon Sinek said, people don't buy what we do, people buy why we do it. You might have the most, we'll go to camera too because it's up and close. This is real, 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 real quick. I'm like, be here. People might have a lot of competition. Should I look at camera one or camera two? Camera two. People have a lot of competition. You have a lot of competition. But if you're selling dog leashes, if you're selling jewelry, if you're selling t-shirts, if you're selling hats, if you are selling dog food, if you're selling your copywriting services, if you are a graphic designer, if you design websites, whatever the case may be, you have a lot of a com competition. So if we know that this is true, that there's a ton of competition in the very thing you want to do, and if we know that there will always be somebody who has more education, more money, better marketing, savvier, who has a nicer car, a nicer zip code, a nicer house, we know that those people exist. How then do you stick out? You stick out by talking about why you started designing dog leashes, why you became a photographer, why you started your business, who it's impacting, the reason behind it. Because never before in human history have we had the opportunity to have a narrative to tell people why we do what we do. People are making a highly emotional decision based on being wildly uneducated about the thing that you sell. People are hiring photographers, people are hiring babysitters, people are hi hiring fitness coaches based on what? Do they know what good form is when they work out? Do they know the quality or the differences of aperture or depth of field when they buy the photo? Of course not, of course not. They're making a highly emotional decision. I need changes in my workouts, I need somebody to document my wedding day, so it's an emotional decision based on <clears throat> I'm getting choked up here. Hold on, let me swallow. <clears throat> People are making an emotional decision, being wildly uneducated. So if then we know that our objective isn't to spend all this time explaining aperture to somebody who doesn't know about photography. Our point of time, we should not be spending all of our time talking about the perfect way to plank when what we want them to do is inspire them to get into the plank and then fix them along the way. Let's dive back in. We're talking about modern marketing. We talked about that people, Simon Sinek said people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Now, nobody else can do what you do, how you do it. I know you have competition. I am not saying anything else, but my friend, if you don't show up and talk about your differences, your customers are gonna have a hard time choosing between you and alternatives. Now, what I have come to see and know, and what I practice is that there are people who crave real connection. On the internet, people want real human connection. Imagine the power that you can give to your business when you are willing to connect. Connecting makes people from a business perspective realize that they know, like, and trust you. If you are not getting sales on the back of social media, there, there's a really good chance that you have a really amazing product. You have an incredible service. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that you're wildly talented and brilliant and good in your customer service and you under promise and you over deliver. I have no doubt about that. But if you have a hard time getting sales, I'm going to guess it's on the back of followers not knowing or liking or trusting. And the only way you change that 
is when you show up as yourself and allow people to have that decision or make that decision on your behalf. Now, what we want you to do is create content and engage because you're doing something that others are not. You're doing something that your competitors are not by you giving the engagement. And here's the thing. It's like I come in and I teach live classes and people are like, this girl says the same thing. I will keep on saying the same thing until I see millions and millions of small business owners whose doors are closing, not on the back of lack of money or talent or wherewithal, but on the lack that nobody knows their business exists. I know I am not the most talented photographer. I know I am not the most talented business strategist. I know I'm not the savviest on social media, but I also know I've been wildly successful. Why? Because I give the thing I ultimately want and build trust along the way. So what we know based on social is that people buy from people, businesses that they connect with. People buy from businesses who they know, like, and trust. So you can be multifaceted and your social media accounts, but they should reflect as a whole, a round rounded picture. Ooh, I just stepped into the light. Look, I'm coming to, they should represent a whole round rounded picture of who you are and what you do and why you do it. Ooh, there it is. I had to get your attention. That's exactly what I was trying to do. So that's why at Social Curator, we use seven caption categories to talk about things that get people to know like and trust you. So let's see what this looks like because I want to take a practicum. I just don't want to say like, go out and be you. And you're like, great. Let's actually break this down into three different categories about me. This is where you bring a personal side into your business. This is the share the small nuances about, again, remember going back to that Simon Sinek, people don't buy what you sell, they buy why you sell it. Tell people a little bit about you. What makes you tick? How do you spend your weekends? Are you educated or are you self-taught? People want to know those things. For example, your favorite music to listen to while you work. That's a post just waiting to happen. That's a story just waiting to happen. And then you could put in that, that music sound in the story. I love to listen to, I mean, shout out to Free Britney. Maybe you like to listen to Toxic. What are you doing? Somebody's going to look at that and be like, oh God, she, <laughs> he listens to Britney? And other people will say, oh my God, he listens to Britney. It's okay, you're being social on social media. So what you love most about being a dog owner, and you're like, what does that have to do with my business? Well, if you work with your dog at your feet, people wanna know that. You're going to attract other dog lovers, you're going to repel people who really love cats, maybe. You can talk about your idea of a perfect Saturday, and you're like, Jasmine, that doesn't have anything to do with my business, but yes, it does. Can you find a way to talk about yourself, your dog, the music that you listen to that inspires you to do your business? And the answer is yes, period period with the T at the end, period. All right, number two, behind the scenes or tutorial. If you think people don't wanna know or see how you create, you're wildly incorrect. In fact, I believe this so much, I want you to test me. So if you're saying, okay, but Jasmine, what do I do? Three examples. The office space where you work and you're like, joke's on you, I work at a coffee shop, people wanna know. What chair do you pick in the coffee shop? I think it says a lot about you. That's a social media post waiting to happen. What do you love most about being in your industry? I don't know what it's like to be in the hairstylist industry. I don't know what it's like to be in the professional speaking industry. Why don't you let me know? Cause it'll make me more affinity, have a stronger affinity towards you. Another idea of behind the scenes, how to use your product or service that can impact your clients. People want to see what it is that they're buying and how it makes their life better. Number three, personal insights. Now, these are fun facts. Now, these actually are really, really, really insightful because people want to connect with you. So you could talk about the tips or tricks of what it is that you do so that you're empowering them to use your product or service in a different way. The values that you live by and you're like, Jasmine, this, this is nothing to do with my business. Honestly, if I'm choosing between X and Y business and I find out that the owner of business X contributes 5% to an organization that I feel really empowered and inspired by, I'm going to choose a company that's aligning with my values. If I come to find out that there is a business owner who volunteers rescuing puppies, there's a really good chance I'm going to choose that business. Why? Because I am making an emotional decision based on very little education around what it is that you do. And if at face value, business X and Y look very similar to me, I'm going to choose by affinity. And so when you have these amazing caption categories to come back, it's empowering people to be attracted to you or to repel from you. Let's get back into that presentation where the last is find ways 
to make your life easier in a way that your prospective customer would value. All of these are just ideas to get your wheels turning. So talking about your business in this way, but I wanna make sure that you know that you don't have to listen to me. In fact, I love when people challenge me. Here's why. This is a lot of text on the screen, so I can't even read it this far. So Mar, I'm gonna hop in closer to this camera so that I can read it. Okay, so I got a DM on how they could sign up for a consult within five minutes. Here's Della saying, I could never show up as myself. She explained that she was brand new and everything that I was saying was rubbing against what she had wanted to do. And then all of a sudden she did it and she got results. There's Joelle who immediately said, I, I can't believe this. Look at this skyrocketing engagement. By what? Doing the thing that I have been saying to do. Now this is an extra long one that I can't even get into reason, but anybody who's going to write this much about being this passionate uh, on the back of doing something that she thought was crazy. We are telling people, hey, do this to get results. Christina, shout out, what, what did this queen get? Like, give me a couple things. I can't even read this far. I mean, am I aging? Am I aging out here? I mean, it might be the case. What happens is if we're getting results, you can screen grab it. It's real good. <laughs> Talk to me, Chris. I'm having a hard time reading it. Um, just having more, um, having? most creative in a long time. She's been, um, she's been the most creative. She's got confidence. She's got confidence. Yep. Come on, by showing up just as her, that's it. Showing up as her. So I want you to be a rebel and to be a gangster with me. I want you to do stuff that other business owners aren't doing. Like what? Be you and show up. Just this morning on the Inside of Social Carrier, I had the opportunity to do group coaching. We brought people on live. We did diagnostics with their accounts and we talked about light bulb moments to move the needle in their business. And let me tell you, these light bulb moments were not on the back of, you know, you have to do this for 27 minutes a day. It's like, no, it's awareness. It's empowerment. It's owning who you are. Kind of, do you guys like that beat? Cause I kind of was like, uh, uh, uh. All we're doing, like this is honest to God. If my life's mission is to make business owners show up and get uncomfortable being uncomfortable. You will not get the results that you want without doing the work that you need to do. So let's get into Q and A. I, 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 said, I said my thing. I would love to see you on the inside of Social Curator, socialcurator.com forward slash join. Let's get into Q and A. Okay, I'm gonna totally ruin the light again. You know what, we're just learning. We're learning, we're learning. <laughs> it's like a hot mess, I'm hurt. All right, uh, go into, uh, if I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to it, is social media still worth my time? Uh, what if I said, okay, what if I said, every day, if you say hi to me, I'll give you a quarter. Would you do it? Let's do some basic math. One quarter every week is about, well, let's just say, because I'm not so good at math, $1.50 times four weeks, less than $10 times 12 months, it's $120, times another year, times another year. At some point over time, just by saying hi to me, you could sit on $500 cash. Would you do it? I am not asking you to go and spend hours. I'm asking you to take what you can and try to make it work. In fact, on the inside of Social Curator, we have daily actions that are less than five minutes. We don't want social media to feel like a second full-time job, but we want you to take action because without action, there is no clarity. And without action, there's no results. And without results, you can't figure out what's actually working. And here's the thing, never before, from this point on, this is as good as Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and Pinterest and Snapchat and LinkedIn. This is the best as it will ever get. And shout out to TikTok too. This is the best it will ever be. This will be the most attention that you will ever get on any social platform. So for the people who are leaving comments to be like, my reach is declining on Facebook. Guess what? It's going to be worse next year and way worse after that. My, my reach is declining on Instagram. I'm not getting, I must be shadow banned. No, no, no. It's the best it'll be ever right now. You might get more followers, but your organic reach is gonna get less and less and less, not because you're not brilliant, but because that's the way social media works. They get your attention and they require you to pay for it on the back end. So 
I would say that your five minute investment today is worth more than your five minute investment next week out here yelling. Am I yelling? Is my mic, are people just like, tell this girl to be quiet? No, no, you have sensitive ears. I'm not that, I'm not that loud. Okay, uh, no one ever comments back on my post. Have I been blacklisted? No, I, I, I actually can't say with certainty because I don't know your account and I don't know what you're doing, but at the end of the day, the market isn't wrong. Somebody isn't out to get you or sabotage you. Instagram has come out and said openly that they don't deploy uh, shadow banning. So instead of listening to conspiracy theories, I'm going to trust what Instagram has come out right and said, that there is no such thing as shadow banning. But let's get into the specifics. When you say no one ever comments back, back on my post, comments. the comments, sorry, what did I say? No, I was saying, I was thinking in my head content. They're content for it. Oh, okay. So our videographer just shouted out. He's like, maybe the content is boring. Yeah, maybe it is. And maybe people don't want to hear it because you're like, no, my content's good. And here's another thing. Your content might be freaking great. But if your caption doesn't give people a way to talk back to you, they won't. You could post bomb content. Hashtag OOTD. Elephant of the day. Hashtag lunch made at home. Hashtag I married my soulmate. Hashtag it's on, or not even hashtag. <laughs> Caption, married my soulmate, so fortunate. Good, what do I say back to that? Furthermore, even if you have a question or drive people for engagement, if you don't hook them in at the beginning and they don't read the click more, they will never get down to the bottom call to action, the thing you want them to do. There's a lot of moving pieces in this answer, but I'm just spitting the truth. Number one, nobody's out to get you. Number two, God, take a good hard look at your content to see if it is actually good enough that warrants a comment. Number three, you have to make sure that you hook them in so that then they click on the read more. And then number four, you have to have a clear call to action to get them to talk back to you. That's all I got. Okay, uh, Rabia says, hey Jasmine, what's your advice for someone starting their brand and getting ready to launch? What's maybe something you wish you knew when you started take bigger risks push yourself two percent beyond what you think is the most comfortable you could ever be at the time of this recording i know that i have to make some pretty big decisions on the inside of social curator and financially it doesn't make sense but the thing that I know beyond all else would be the same advice I wish I would have given myself back in 2006 when I started my business. I wish I would give the same advice when I pivoted my business in 2015. I wish I could give myself the same advice when I pivoted yet again in 2017. And that advice is take bigger risks. Get 2% more uncomfortable than you have ever imagined that you could ever be. Because on the back of your action, you can always take it back. You can never make up for the lost time that you wasted not investing in the thing that you needed to do. So, Rabia, I know you girl, uh, bigger risks. 2% more uncomfortable than you would feel on the back end. So every week, we have these conversations, we go live, I answer questions, we talk about a particular topic. I sometimes do these from my laptop in my living room. Sometimes I get the opportunity, the luxury, and the honor to work with a video team. Let us know, do you prefer the more casual ones of me in my living room using Zoom? Do you prefer having conversations along with a keynote and keep things moving along? Every twice, three times a month, I just do a straight up Q and A where I show up and answer questions. Why? I wanna be social on social media. I want to practice what I tell people to do. So join me in being a rebel, join me in doing things different, and join me in doing things that your competitors are not willing to do because that, my friend, is how you get noticed. I hope you have a beautiful day. Take care, y'all.